And then look at this. What the heck is this? Are you seeing this on the Gulf of Mexico? Is this Gulf effect snow? You've heard of lake effect snow, but have you heard of Gulf effect snow? What kind of winter are we in right now? Yeah, right now, right now, right now, right now. Right now. Welcome back y'all, Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. We are gonna use this whole entire video to cover this upcoming parade of massive snowstorms that could potentially cause major impacts for everyone between Amarillo, Texas, to St. Louis, to Chicago, all the way to Boston. We're talking about some rare and intense threats for some of the most interesting weather we've seen in a while. So without further ado, let's start talking about the weather. All right, here's a big old look at the United States of America. And we've got a couple things going on. Check this out. We're gonna start over here in the east. All right, we've got winter weather advisories from Roanoke to Winston-Salem. We've got a couple winter storm warnings here in central Virginia, and we've got a winter storm watch that goes all the way up to Washington, D.C. That's associated with this area of precipitation down here. This is going to creep north tonight, and we're probably going to see a little bit of snow and ice, especially here in central Virginia, all the way up to Richmond, Dale City, uh, Washington. I don't think it'll affect Baltimore too much at this point, but there is that winter storm watch in effect all the way until tomorrow at midnight. And then if we scroll over here to the west, check this out, a big giant area of winter storm watches. That's right. Uh, winter storm watches all the way down into southwestern Texas and all the way as far north as into Nebraska. Now this will expand and probably go to the east as we go later on into the day tomorrow. Confidence is increasing that a major winter storm is going to affect a majority of the United States. Honestly, this is going to be a massive winter storm. But then we also have wind chill advisories in association with that huge blast of Arctic air that's coming down. These are going to be some dangerous wind chills, possibly around 20 to 30 degrees below zero. And then up here in the Northwest, our Pacific jet stream has just been dumping snow and rain on these guys. It's actually snowing in Portland, Oregon right now, which is kind of rare. Some of that cold air has dipped down a little bit further south than what it usually does. But as you can see, we've just got a ton of moisture coming in and that's what's fueling our parade of huge winter storms that's moving through the United States, okay? So those are our current conditions. What's gonna happen in the future? Let's check it out on the weather models. All right, we're gonna start off with the GFS. If you like snow chant with me okay here we go g f s g f s g f s g f s g f s g f s g f s Okay, before we put this into motion, let's look at the three things that are preceding our major storm. Here's our lobe of the polar vortex. This is a very large area of high pressure. This is what's responsible for moving that cold air south, as far south as southern Texas. A lot of these places are gonna probably see record lows if the GFS verifies. If not, then very close. And then we have this just huge area of moisture over here along our southeast ridge. As you can see, the cold air meets the warm air right there, and it just provides a perfect train track for the Gulf moisture to come up and ride this way. That's what's happening right now, and that's why we're we're having a winter storm warning over here in central Virginia um, as this moisture runs into some dammed up cold air um, and that's going to probably cause some ice and snow problems. Also, we just have a ton of moisture coming in off the Pacific Ocean um, tonight into tomorrow. A little bit of that moisture is going to try to swing across the Ohio Valley, maybe leaving a trace of snow, maybe an inch of snow for some people right through here. The real thing to watch is our next disturbance that's moving through into Oregon right now. If I push this into motion, let's watch everything evolve. As you can see, there's that moisture that's moving through Michigan. Michigan and Wisconsin. Here's our little ice storm in Virginia and DC. But here's our big daddy, all right? This right here is the big daddy. Big daddy snowstorm, all right? This is what we're really paying attention to here. This area of moisture wants to slam directly east into the United States, but it's getting squeezed down by this gang of high pressure up here. And once that happens, it finds some available energy down here in a true low pressure system. An upper level low, a neutral vorticity max forms. And we got ourselves a snowstorm, bub. Let's watch this right here. That cold air slamming into northern Texas. It's meeting up with some moisture from the Gulf of Mexico, and we've got ice, freezing rain, possibly an ice storm going on on the coast of Texas, all right? I can't explain how, you know, absolutely incredible uh, what we're looking at here is. This is this is rare, this is unusual, and it's exciting, <laughs> to say the least. We've got heavy sleet now for through central Texas all the way up through the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Well, you're right on the border there between some snow and some sleet. Look, the snow and the freezing rain goes all the way down into Mexico, and we've got 
got that really cold air just digging back behind it here. And I do always have to mention this. Remember, if you're in Oklahoma and it's snowing at 4 a.m. on Monday, February 15th, according to this model, it doesn't look like much, right? But you got to remember, it's going to be like very cold. According to this model, it will be below zero. Every single flake sticks. This is not going to be a 10 to 1 ratio kind of storm. This could be a 20 to 1 ratio, maybe even a 30 to 1 liquid to snow ratio. So if it snows at all, it's going to pile up. And that's even true down here, closer to the heavier precipitation. It won't be as cold there, but it's going to be significantly below freezing. So uh, I do think this is going to be a widespread uh, 20 to 1 snowfall ratio kind of storm. And that moves into Arkansas here. Watch the freezing rain, the heavy freezing rain, all the way down into close to New Orleans, uh, southern Mississippi, moving into Macon, Mississippi. And then we've got that sleet uh, from Houston all the way up into uh, close to Memphis, Tennessee. And notice how our gang of high pressures are closing in closer now uh, to our low pressure system that's forming. This tells me that these isobars may try to stack up pretty close together. And we may be dealing with some intermittent blizzard conditions in this area right here as the storm goes by. We'll have to keep an eye on that, but like it'll definitely be gusty. And then here we go. We're at 7 p.m. on Monday, February 15th, and we've got a snowstorm and a half for Western Kentucky, Indiana, Illinois, Missouri, Arkansas, and extreme Western Tennessee. And then we have a pretty prolific ice and sleet storm through Mississippi, Alabama, Eastern Tennessee, Central Tennessee, Eastern Kentucky. Uh, this one right here actually looks more significant and more dangerous than the one we just dealt with because there's a lot more moisture to work with. There's a lot more warm air aloft, and there's a lot more of this cold air that's finally coming in on the surface. So this could turn out to be a very uh, serious crippling ice storm uh, for whoever this lines up for. We're at 1 a.m. on Tuesday, Columbus, Ohio, Snowtown, baby, Indianapolis, Snowtown, Snowtown, baby. Cincinnati, Snowtown, baby. Louisville, Kentucky, Snowtown, baby. Evansville, Indiana, Snowtown, baby. Pittsburgh, Snowtown, baby. And all these cities are just going to be dealing with some incredible um, heavy snow up here, especially once it takes a turn towards the northeast. There's a little bit of a transfer of energy because there's so much available here in the Atlantic Ocean. Kind of steals that low to the east, and that's good for people in the interior northeast if you want snow. But look, we're still dealing with this heavy icing going on now from Morgantown, West Virginia, into D.C., Baltimore, southern Jersey, northern Delaware, all the way out into Long Island. We've got sleet as far north as Boston, and that trains over the Long Island area for a while there. That would probably end up being a pretty significant ice storm for New York City, if that was to verify. But look at the heavy snow in northern Pennsylvania, upstate New York, now moving into Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, and then that's finally out of here by 4 p.m. on Tuesday. So let's watch the full progression of that storm again. There it is, and there it goes. Okay, looking at snowfall totals, this right here is the 10 to 1 ratio, okay? Essentially what this means is the model is converting liquid to snowfall at a 10 to 1 ratio. So if an inch of liquid falls in a certain area, the model is estimating that that area will see 10 inches of snow. That is a very common measurement to use because usually the temperatures are right around 29 to 35 degrees whenever it's snowing. And that's a good ratio to use whenever the temperatures are around that area. However, in this case, especially behind this line, west of this line, okay? Back here, the temperatures are going to be astronomically lower than 30 degrees. Therefore, the liquid to snowfall ratio will be astronomically higher. And thank goodness, the GFS gives us the ability to look at the Kuchera ratio, uh, which I believe may be a little bit more realistic here. Check this out. We're, we're right near a foot of snow near the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Uh, the Dallas, I know I've got a lot of people who watch these videos from Dallas. Um, this is a tough one for you guys. You're right on the edge of uh, being wh where you could get two to four inches or six to 12. Northern Texas Amarillo, I have more confidence that these numbers may be more correct for you. Uh, now, will you see 15, 16 inches of snow? Maybe not, but definitely close to a foot is 100% possible up here in northern Texas. Same thing up here in the Woodland, Oklahoma, in the Panhandle of Oklahoma. You guys are going to see a lot of snow. Out here in central Oklahoma, the whole state has a good bet of seeing uh, 10 inches or more of snow. But I would not be surprised if a couple areas saw that, you know, foot or more, maybe 13, 14 inches. Just depends on how hard it snows and how far back into that cold zone you are when the snow starts. And then look here, much of Arkansas gets, you know, 8, 9, 10 inches of snow. Uh, we're talking about St. Louis getting 10 or 11 inches. This would be a shutdown storm for the south if this was to verify. And look how far south these totals goes. We're talking about, you know, a couple inches maybe as far south as Austin, Texas. And then look at this. What the heck is this? Are you seeing this on the Gulf of Mexico? Is this Gulf effect snow? You've heard of lake effect snow, but have you heard of Gulf effect snow? 
what kind of winter are we in right now? Okay, let's check out the Ohio Valley. This is a blockbuster storm. This is a great storm for you if you're in Ohio, Indiana, or Southern Illinois, uh, because this is one of those storms that takes that rare path that puts you right in the right area uh, to be in that precipitation shield. And also there's tons of cold air with this one. Obviously the models are gonna change. The track is gonna shift a little bit, so we don't wanna get too specific with who's gonna see what, uh, but this map will look very similar to this once it's all set and done. It might just be a little bit further north, a little bit further south and east, and the totals may be a little bit higher or a little bit lower. The northeast is gonna get a lot of snow from this too, especially in upstate New York and northern Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh, this looks like this could possibly be a foot or more kind of storm for you. Syracuse, Albany, this looks incredible for you guys. And then obviously up here into Vermont, New Hampshire, uh, and Maine, uh, this looks like it could, it could be a decent storm for you. Boston, you're gonna be in that battle zone once again, who knows? <laughs> this looks to me, I think that this will probably end up being a mostly rain and an ice storm for you. This tracks just a little bit further to the south. You could see some snow, but we got to remember the Atlantic Ocean is very warm right now, and that's where this new low pressure system that forms is going to be getting its energy. So it's going to be flinging it up uh, right into the coastal areas of New England here. Uh, definitely, if you're on Cape Cod or Long Island, I wouldn't expect too much snow from this. However, there could be a very significant ice storm from Philadelphia to Tom's River to New York City, all the way out into Southampton to Connecticut, Rhode Island, and all the way out into Cape Cod. So keep keep in mind that we are looking at the possibility for that. Okay, going back to the precipitation view, we're not done, okay? <laughs> the GFS shows us one big storm. What happens after it's gone? Do we get some warm air advection and a little ridge that moves in and warms us up nicely for spring? No, sir. The GFS sees another major storm forming, and this one right here is pulling that cold air down once again. It looks very similar to the other storm. There's less energy from the Pacific for it to work with, and these high pressure systems up here aren't as strong, so there's not as much cold air with this one, but this is still a very intense storm. Look at the ice from Texas into Louisiana, Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky, all the way up into Ohio now. Um, and just look at this wave. This is a wave and a half right here. We're gonna see a big kink in the trough here, and that's gonna allow for this storm to cut almost directly north and east. We're also talking about the potential for severe weather in Dixie Alley from Southern Louisiana through Alabama, Mississippi, and Eastern Tennessee, maybe into Georgia as well. Uh, we could be seeing some, uh, you know, pretty significant severe weather on Thursday. And then look at this, we've got another ice storm on Friday uh, for the Northeast. This does not look good. Very active pattern, two major storms on their way. Uh, this one right here looks to me like it could eventually change into something. Like if this was to uh, go a little bit further east, which is possible because that first storm is going to bring down those high pressure systems and that and that cold air is really going to be forcing a lot of these storms off this way. So it's possible that this goes a little bit further east and we're dealing with another major snowstorm for the northeast, maybe even for the coastal regions. But as of right now, this is showing another Appalachian runner storm that could possibly be a very intense ice storm for a lot of people, unfortunately. And and a severe weather event. This is the total snow for both of those storms with the 10 to one ratio, okay? So this is the this is not even uh, with the Kuchera ratio, look at it. And with the Kuchera on there, we're talking about snowmageddon. Over the course of 200 hours, uh, Eastern Oklahoma getting 20 inches of snow, well over two feet for uh, parts of Indiana, Illinois, and Ohio. In upstate New York, Northeast Ohio, Northwest Pennsylvania get buried in snow. This is a fun map to look at. Point of me showing this is just to show how active the pattern is. Uh, and we've got two blockbuster storms that may take the, almost the exact same path and just create a very memorable winter for a lot of people in this area right here. You will not forget the winter of 2021. Also, the 200 hour probability for accumulation of ice is looking really bad. We will talk more about the ice storm potential of uh, these storms as we go forward, as we get closer. I don't wanna focus too much on it right now uh, because ice storms and freezing rain are extremely hard to predict, especially this far out. So once we get closer, we'll dive in on where we think the most ice is gonna fall because honestly, that's the most dangerous part of these kinds of storms. Okay, now, last model that we're gonna look at is the NAM, the North American model. This is a much higher resolution model than the GFS, so we can dive in and take a much better look and a closer look at who's gonna get what uh, as this storm comes through because we're close enough to look at it with our high resolution models. Let's start off down here in the South Central region of the United States and let's put this into motion and watch our storm form. There we go. As you can see, the NAM is suggesting 
causing an area of sleet and freezing rain that starts up before the main the main system shows up down here from uh, the Pacific Northwest. You know, we saw what happened in, in Dallas and the Fort Worth area the other day uh, with the freezing fog and the slick roads and the pile up. It was bad. So we got to keep our eye out for that. And then here comes our big snowstorm and our huge shot of cold air behind it. Dang, man. Even the NAM sees the cold air uh, very intensely coming down into Texas, which is a very good thing. Look here. We got the freezing rain and the sleet all the way down into southeastern Texas. And the NAM's going to slide that off to the east. And it's really blowing up that storm over here in the Ozarks up near Memphis and then into western Kentucky. This is something that the GFS or the Euro really didn't show as much like this kind of bombing out that's happening right here. Check this out. As the storm comes up, our low pressure system really starts to develop and we've got heavy ice for central Tennessee and eastern Kentucky and really heavy snow with once again possibly blizzard conditions um, in western Kentucky, northwestern Tennessee, southern Illinois, uh, extreme southeastern portions of Missouri, northeastern Arkansas, and then that's going to move north and east. But the North American model only goes out 84 hours and that's as far as that's going to go right there. But once again, man, uh, I live over here. This is this looks like another opportunity for a very bad situation for me. However, just to my north in Cincinnati, I'm happy for you guys. This will probably end up being um, another really good run of snow for you guys. Um, pretty much everybody in Ohio, Indiana, you guys are looking good for this storm and obviously Missouri and, and points south and west. So man, just absolutely insane what's going on with our weather pattern right now. Okay, 10 to 1 snowfall ratio so far on the NAM. Once again, looks really similar to the rest of them, but it's actually more intense over here in the Ohio River Valleys, the Mississippi River Valley. The NAM is saying bam for you guys over here. But once again, especially over here in Oklahoma, we need to be looking at the Cuchera ratios as that cold area is going to be in place here. Um, it's going to be a little bit tighter over here in, in, in this area because you're going to be closer to the low pressure system. But look, I mean, we're still talking about a, an incredibly memorable storm, according to the NAM. And some of those bands do make it into the Dallas Fort Worth area. Okay, guys, that's all of the winter weather talk I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure you slap a like on this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and turn on notifications. We are gaining like 600 subscribers a day right now, which is awesome. But still, somehow, 75%. Actually, you know what? I just checked and it was 74% now. <laughs> so 74% of the people who watch my videos are not subscribed. So if you're one of those people, now's your opportunity to subscribe. I'm going to be going live during the peak of these storms and you don't want to miss that notification because our live streams and live weather coverage are, it's really fun on this channel. So make sure you join us for that. Thank you guys so much for being here. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Rip.